Hi, welcome to the Sewing Street tutorial YouTube. I'm Steffi from The Makers and I've needle felted for 20 plus years. In this video, I will be showing you how to make a very basic needle felting project. And it's a little owl, which is just a very simple shape. It's super easy. You can do it. So I will be showing you how to make one of these super cute little, little owls, um, all made from wool. And this is using one of our kits. Now the kit makes two. And of course, when you get your kit, you get your felting mat, which which is what you need to needle felt on. You get uh, your felting needles inside this envelope. I have already rigged my own felting needles up, but you get a, a fine one, which is marked green and the medium one so that it, the instructions tell you when to use which one. You also get a two glue in eyes, only two because one of the owls is actually very sleepy and fast asleep. And uh, you get uh, the felting mat, which I'm also using this one here. You get all of this wool, but because we're making two owls, the first thing we're going to do is split it all in half. Now this is not rocket science, so you can just do it roughly, but that uh, ensures that you've got uh, the same size owls that you will be making from the wool that you have got. Often in our kits, you have left over quite a lot of wool, but we'll just split it literally in half. So we've got, we're starting out with the same thing. Now this wool here, slightly creamier than the other white wool in there, is what we call a core wool. And first of all, you're going to wind this into a, a rough sort of egg shape or a slightly very stubby sausage shape. And what works really well is by teasing the last little bits of fibers out when you're going round and round the shape to overlay the wool in different layers. Then you're going to take your medium felting needle and you stub in the last wispy fibers into the shape to secure the shape. And that is the basic owl shape already done. Needle felting is so easy. People often don't realize how quickly you can achieve a very simple shape. You don't need anything else inside. You can just use the wool. Now, I obviously want to felt this down a little bit and tuck the fibers in, but our little owl has already got a little tail, so I can just tease a bit of the wool out and start shaping the owl shape so that I have a little tail here at the end. And you can see wherever I stub the wool is where the reduction takes place. So this is where I literally sculpt by using the needle and I sculpt with wool. And the felting mat is really useful to be able to felt some of the thinner and flatter parts because you can lay this onto the felting mat and then stab into the wool and into the mat at the same time. Now this means that you are securing the shape onto the mat, so you just have to make sure that occasionally you just tease it off. And you can do this from the other side as well. So my owl now looks like this. Now obviously when you're doing your kit, you don't have the shape to compare, but if you follow the instructions, it will be quite easy to do this. So my owl shape is coming along quite nicely. It's quite soft still at, um, at points and there's a bit of wool still flopping about. So I'm going to just stab that in with a needle nice and gently to firm up the shape, but also to continue with the sculpting of the shape. And I do this all over. Now, because I'm going to cover most of this owl with another layer of wool, it doesn't matter too much if there are some imperfections. So you can now use some of the other wools and uh, you've got a little bit of that really rich, lovely colored caramel color wool. And you can mix the fiber to make, give the owl a mottled effect. Now you don't want to mix the fibers too much because you you're literally trying to get a feathery dotted patterned effect so now you're going to give your owl that wing shape so i've decided this is going to be the face and this is going to be the side and we're coloring in the owl now by just adding the wool mix that you have made on top of the existing shape and felting the wool in. Because owls are fluffy and uh, soft looking, we don't even need to make it too um, smooth on the surface, but allow some of the natural uh, wool fiber to add to this natural look of the owl. So that's one side of the owl, including the tail done. And then I'm going to repeat this on the other side. Mix a little bit more wool. The good thing is that you can adjust your um, needle felting at all times. And if you think, oh, I don't like this, this is in the wrong place, just peel it off and adjust it like this one. I want a little bit more brown in there. So there's nothing really ever completely lost when you are needle felting because there's so much opportunity to adjust what you're doing. And I think that's the probably the single most thing about the needle felting that allows you to relax into the craft because you're not going to mess it up in many ways because there's so many ways that you can adjust it. You can cover up mistakes, you can pull it off, you can make it into something completely different if you if you must. So if you look at this now, this side is slightly higher than this side, but if you go into the wing at the top at a slight angle so that you go straight into the top of the wing, you can actually bring it down. And now I've brought it down too much, so I have to adjust the other side as well. I'm going to cover now the back of 
of the owl in the same way. And you sometimes you can tease the wool out so that you let it run across the body. It's probably worth noting that especially when you're making animals with a furry or a feathery cover, you want uh, the feathers or the fur to run in the direction of how they would naturally run as well. So now I've got to continue covering my owl on the head, top of the head and I'm mixing a little bit more wool. So remember mixing little and often, that's the, the trick of getting the right wool mix, but also to manage it with your fingers so you don't run out of steam mixing the wool. And now I'm going to add the wool to the top of the head and I want to start uh, focusing on getting that head shrunk down a little bit. And I'm giving it also a little, a little uh, mask. So whilst I'm adding the wool, I'm not just stabbing it superficially, I'm actually going quite deep into the shape to reduce the size of the head of the owl at the same time. And I want to give it sort of that little dip here in the center of the face to make a little a little owl mask or surrounding it with, with the feathery bits that um, fall into the face. So if I feel this now, this feels firmer than it feels here around the tummy. And I'm going to continue working on that face mask of the little owl. So my beak will go here in the middle and I'm going to do that next. So the beak is actually a little bit of yellow and you can mix a little bit of brown into it as well. So it softens the yellow a little bit. And what I'm doing is the sound you're hearing is I'm not just mixing the wool, I'm also shortening the fiber. Literally twist this into a little shape and just felt it down. I want to get to the shape of a, a rice corn. So whilst I'm stabbing this um, now on my mat, I'm also stabbing it into the mat. So I've got to peel it off and just continue the shaping until I've got a separate little shape. Now you can flatten the fibers by twisting it between your fingers, but sometimes it also works just to cut little wispy bits off to smooth it down. And all I'm going to do now is I attach it to my owl. So owls have got beaks that are facing down rather than sticking at a, out at a right angle like a, a garden bird, like a robin or a similar. So their, their beaks are facing down and you can just use a tiny little bit of the brown wool to cover the top and follow that, that line, that mask. So now I've got the beak on. I'm going to work a little bit more on this eye area to shrink that down a bit more and to make indentations to where the eyes will be glued in. Now, if you're making an owl with a, with a sleepy face, then you just add another line in there for the eyes to go. But I'm going to use the glue in eyes, which come in the kit. And I absolutely love these because they are on a metal pin and they have a little glass bead on the top. You have to make holes into the eyes of the, of the owl. And you, I do this by using my felting needle, but if you have an awl, you can use that too. Now you do need to sink the needle in as far as you possibly can. So so that it gets to that thicker rounder part and give it a bit of a jiggle. Don't jiggle the needle unless it's all the way in. And you can pop the eye in. This, this is my favorite part because it always makes it come alive. And you've got a little face looking at you. Now to secure the eyes, all you need is a very basic glue. You don't need special fabric glue or anything like, anything like this. This is a PVA based glue. So add a dab of glue to the back of the eye and that's enough to secure the eyes. Now you can work a little bit more on the shaping. I can see that this wing is still sticking forward a little bit more. So I might add a little bit more to this side. We also have to cover the, the chest of the owl a little bit by using a mottled mix, a very white mottled mix. So all of that can still happen, even though I could consider this owl to be finished. And um, the others have got a little friend now. Perfect. So I hope you have as much fun making these little owls as I have and uh, can't wait to see your creations. And remember to subscribe to the channel so that you have access to lots more tutorials, including needle felting. Thank you.